The imaginary unit is defined as i equals radical 1. Imaginary numbers are used when a quadratic equation has no real numbers as its roots. As shown here, pure imaginary numbers are written in the form of bi, where i is, of course, equal to radical negative 1, and b is a real number. Complex numbers are like pure imaginary numbers, but instead are written in the form a plus bi, where a and b are both real numbers and i is imaginary. The imaginary unit, i, is cyclic, meaning it repeats in a definite pattern, as shown here. This repeating pattern helps in simplifying imaginary numbers. Here is an example in which i to the 83rd power is simplified. If you use the powers of i table, you can simplify i to the 83rd. Divide 83 by 4, and you get 20 with a remainder of 3. Use this remainder as an exponent of i, and you'll get i to the 3rd, which is equal to negative i. We know that i is equal to radical negative 1. We can use this to simplify the example shown here. Radical negative 25 is equal to rad 25 times rad negative 1. Rad 25 equals 5, and rad negative 1 equals i, so the answer is 5i. When adding complex numbers, you must remember to add like terms. Add the real numbers together, and then add the imaginary numbers together. You should be adding 2 with 1 and 3i with negative 6i, getting an answer of 3 minus 3i, which is in a plus bi form. Subtraction is pretty much the same. You must subtract real numbers from real numbers, and then subtract the imaginary numbers from imaginary numbers. Remember though, that when subtracting, it is like there's a negative 1 in front of the second complex number, and it must be distributed as shown here in the example. After subtracting like terms, which in this case is adding 5 and 4 together, and negative 2i and i together, you will get 9 minus i as the answer. Multiplying complex numbers is very much like multiplying binomials, in which a complex number is made up of two terms. In order to multiply, you would FOIL. Shown here is an example of multiplying complex numbers. After FOILing 6 plus 5i minus 4i squared, which becomes 6 plus 5i plus 4 because i squared is equal to negative 1. After adding the two real numbers together, you will get an answer in a plus bi form, which is 10 plus 5i. With division, write the problem as a fraction. However, you cannot have an i on the bottom of your fraction in your final answer. Given the example 3 over 2i, you must multiply by i on both the top and the bottom. If you remember back to the repeating pattern of i, i squared is equal to negative 1. After multiplying by i, the bottom of your fraction will have 2i squared, which is equal to negative 2. Your final answer will be 3i over negative 2. However, problems can get more complicated, and instead of having just one imaginary term, you might have a complex number with two terms on the bottom of your fraction. In the example of 3 over 2 plus i shown here, the denominator contains two terms, 2 plus i. Multiplying by just i will not work because one of the terms will still have the imaginary number in it. To deal with this issue, you must instead multiply by the conjugate of the complex number in the, in the denominator. And the conjugate of a complex number is the same number but with the opposite sign, so the conjugate of 2 plus i in the denominator is 2 minus i. After multiplying by the conjugate, you may notice that what you get is a difference of two squares. You will end up with 4 minus i squared in the denominator which becomes 4 plus 1, which is 5. The answer is not 6 minus 3i over 5, because it must be expressed in the form of a plus bi. 6 minus 3i over, over 5 is equal to 6 over 5 minus 3 over 5i. When graphing complex numbers, you can't use a normal set of axes. Instead, the x-axis will represent real numbers, while the y-axis represents imaginary numbers. A complex number a plus bi is the point AB, or the vector from the origin to the point AB. Here are some examples of graphs of complex numbers. Happy Reach Day, Mr. Q! Heart.